Now, with the cone, you're using all of the devices that we've all we've been using so far. First, of course, is the ellipse at the bottom to describe the roundness of the cone. So, we'll go on in and make our X. Remember again how important it is to use your vanishing point to take the center of the base of the cone back to the vanishing point and we'll bisect the depth in half. Now when you do this, make sure this appears has more depth than the back. I I made mine a little higher just just to make sure that because of foreshortening and perspective this should have a little more appear to have a little more depth than the distance from here to here so if it doesn't that will have affect and influence your circle as well so now i do that same old thing dividing into three parts Okay. And you know that the circle touches here, and here, and here, and here. And I'm going to use the marks that I've made to draw the actual ellipse. And I'm trying very hard to leave some room here, not to fill that in. Because I'm thinking round, round, round. Now if I could turn my paper, I would turn my paper, because this is it's very difficult to to get round this if I'm not able to come at it from another side. So there's our base line there, and we need another X on the top, although we're not going to make another ellipse. We need an X in order to find the center. And you make sure, now you're using your parallel rulers and your set squares, so you won't have any trouble making these line up and straight. So I do recommend that you do that. Now, you see my circle escapes over here like that. So when I try to join up the center of my cone to the side, I can't join it to the orange line because this is proving to be wider than the orange line because I'm so far below eye level that the circle actually is wider at the back. I can see some of it going around the back and that's all right. If that's the way it looks, that's the way it looks. So this is now round here. It's coming round. And on the other side though, I can come right up to the center and it's, it's, or a little bit away from it, just a little bit away. And again, you can use your French curves if you're getting good at that, but just make sure that you leave the gap here. Don't try to fill the whole box up. That's not the objective. It's to make it look round. Okay. Now again, you're going to have borders all around, and you're doing four shapes to a page. And you're going to put the horizon on each one of them and note your vanishing point, and you're going to say the shape, what the shape is, that it's a cone. And now for the shadow. So we want our shadow to come from a light source that's hitting the surface at the front and to the side. 
So don't make it too big, it'll be inaccurate. So just like with the cylinder, they have a lot in common, of course. So I'm looking for the widest part. So if I bring my line, my set square up with the dot that I've made and move it, move it, move it up until I hit the cone, that gives me the line. But this doesn't describe that, does it? So I know that's not the right way to do this. So instead, for the cone, you have a little bit something different to do. You have to go from your light source where it hits the surface through the center and go. So through the center, that's the difference. But I do need the widest part of my, my cone I choose a depth for my shadow. If I like this length, then I choose that. And I line up, I bring my set square from that dot, my chosen length, and I move it in and move it in until it hits the cone. And that's where I know to make my line. So this would not have suited at all. But now I'm getting something that looks like the angle on the cone. So, and then I do the same thing, bring my, my set score down until I find the widest part of the ellipse at the back, and that will give me the rest of the shadow that I need. Now, when you start your cross hatching, you're going to start with an angle. So, it looks like I would start it somewhere around here, so you have enough shadow. And it might be easier to start with vertical lines. And then you can cross the other way. And of course, the cast shadow is the darkest, so... So I won't take up too much time finishing this, but you continue to cross hatch until you have your shadow filled in, making it darkest here and darkest underneath and darkest here. This is the core dark. This is what makes it look round because the surface is all lit up. Remember, this is all lit up and the light is bouncing up into this area. So you make it dark, but you also have to soften the edge a little bit by coming up, extending out a little past that. And we're going to have a little bit of line on this side too. Just to show that there's a bit of a half tone here. But the most, the darkest dark is inside the form. And try to get your hatching to blend a little bit. the cone.